Heading ring, here's Crackers Keenan with the up -up. For sure, Peter, and uh, really New Zealand money. Rough Abbott, Vianda Cross, and there's a fair bit of money for Castletown. Uh, little Nolly Harris, the little Black Ducks riding it, and there's a bit of, been a bit of spanking for it, but there's been plenty of money, a great betting race this race. So on those tight odds, there's little between Rough Habit and Vianda Cross. A traditional lead-up to the Foster's Melbourne Cup on Tuesday, and a great race in its own right. The Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes candidates on their way to the stalls. We'll take a break and be back with Network. New Zealand that's probably going a little bit deeper. He has one on heavy tracks, but um, he's just as good on top of the ground too. Runners are moving into the gates. Gary Willits, your selection in the McKinnon. Well, Dan, I've had to come back to Rough Habit simply because of the way the track is. But the horse that really took my eye going out was Star of the Realm. I know the track will most probably be against him, but gee, if you've backed him in the cup on Tuesday, I'd still keep following him. I think he looks tremendous. He certainly does look sharper. He was taken up to Huntley Lodge after he failed in the Caulfield Cup and it was easily noted at track work during the week. He did stand out star of the room. I thought he was the pick of all the horses that worked here on Thursday morning, but obviously a dry track is what he wants. There he is just going out of the picture now and there's Royal Magic. She's come through a race well in the Caulfield Cup. So, uh... Well, she was in season that day, so there may have been uh, excuses for her failure, but it wasn't a bad run. She finished sixth. That's right. Yes, it was a very good run. Now only a couple of horses to go up to the gates and they're three of the Kiwis, Rough Habit, Royal Magic and uh, Captain Cook. I thought Rough Habit looks to me in the stand. He's come through that race the Cox Bay but no harm to him by the look of him. He looked very bright doing his play. Looked fantastic. Captain Cook goes in. He's the likely pacemaker in the race and Rough Habit. They're set for the McKinnon. 2,000 metres. Light is on. Set for a start. Racing in the McKinnon Stakes. Oh, Vianda Cross stood there and missed it three lengths. Castletown was a little bit slower to stride and Captain Cook goes straight to the front. Captain Cook in front early from Equity and Prince Alieri. Dr. Grace to fourth, a length away, Heroicity fifth. Then Star of the Realm and they were followed by Royal Magic. Vianda Cross getting up on the inside of Castletown. Then Sub-Zero, better loosen up and Rough Habit last of all. And it's 20 lengths off the lead and Captain Cook has taken off with Harry White. Captain Cook by the 1500 has raced out five lengths in front. Aquidity second, third placing Dr. Grace. Prince Alieri fourth, two lengths to Heroicity and Captain Cook's gone further in front. Four lengths behind Heroicity was Star of the Realm in the blue and white colours. Then Vianda Cross, Royal Magic, a length and a half to Castletown. Better loosen up third last on the inside of Sub-Zero. And Rough Habits last and he must be 25 to 30 lengths off the lead. Captain Cook, 1100 metres to go, led by 10 lengths. Second liquidity, a length and a half to Dr. Grace, two to Prince Alieri. Three lengths away, fifth heroicity. Four lengths away, star of the realm. Then Vianda Cross on the inside of Royal Magic, a length and a half to Castletown. Over on the inside next, better loosen up and then Sub-Zero. And last of all was Rough Habit. Captain Cook coming back to them. They have 800 metres to go and he led by five lengths now. Second, Dr. Grace, third, Equity. Then came Vianda Cross, followed by Prince Salieri, Royal Magic over on the outside. Going around them wider was Castletown as they run up to the turn and they're bunched right up now. Rough Habit gets to third last on the outside of Better Loosen Up and Sub-Zero last of all. Around the turn, 500 metres to go on the McKinnon. And the leader is still Captain Cook by a length. Aquidity switched back to the inside, joining in Dr. Grace. They were followed by Heroicity, running on strongly with Prince Salieri and then Royal Magic, followed by Vianda Cross. They have 300 metres to go, Prince Salieri in front, trying to run it down on the outside, Heroicity. And here comes Rough Habit. Rough Habit's running on very strongly from them came Vianda Cross. But Rough Habit loomed up 100 to go and hit the front. Rough Habit through a length in front, Vianda Cross played his fly. Vianda Cross is the one, Vianda Cross got up on the fence to win. Vianda Cross beat Rough Habit, close up in the race third, it's a photo between Heroicity, wide out star of the realm and Equity. They were followed in uh, behind them by Prince Alieri, then came Royal Magic, back towards the rear, Castletown, better loosen up Dr Grace and the pacemaker last, Captain Cook. Well, Rough Habit looked the winner there, Gary, at the 200, and Vianda Cross died just bided his time. Well, he certainly did, and uh, you know, I don't know what happened at the start with the horse just stood there or something happened, but uh, it was certainly a great run. He looked the winner all the way in the straight if he got the run. And uh, I hope that silenced quite a few of Shane Dye's critics because uh, he's been a great jockey, and uh, you know, he might have had one blemish on his career at Caulfield, but I'd hate people to remember it for that. But well, there was a couple of great runs in that. I still think Star of the Realm was a very good run. He was an excellent performance, Star of the Realm, but 
You cannot possibly take away anything from the, the first two horses. Beyond across has missed it, I'd say, at least by three lengths. He drew barrier four. Let's go back to the start and look towards the inside barrier four in the pink and turquoise colours. And he virtually just stood in the gates. There he comes out now. There's three or four in front of him, Gary. Well, I can't honestly see what's happened to him, uh, Dan, whether the horse just hasn't jumped or whether he's perhaps had his head on the side or something. But uh, it didn't actually matter the way the race turned out because he got home better than anything. You can see here that Shane Dye is out of uh, range. He gets interfered with there. It's him one off the fence. He can't get a run here. Captain Cook's still in, just in the orange colours just outside of him. Horse has gone back the fence now, he's got a run. He's got between Captain Cook. Dr. Grace is outside Captain Cook. Prince Solari, star of the realm, you can see he's four in, five in from the outside in the blue. He hasn't got a lot of room yet. Rough Havitt's just in front of star of the realm. Three from the outside, four from the outside. And this is where Prince Solari comes in front of the end across so he yeah. runs blocked again. That's right right in front of him he's checked oh. here and he's done a great job to get going again this horse gee what a performance it's a great run and the jeers from the crowd no doubt some of the uh, fans who uh backed the horse in the caulfield cup but it's just a phenomenal performance today by he and rough habit who was hailed the winner at the 150 Here's, meter uh, point another shot of this you can just see where uh you watch prince solari will just shift over in front of the hand across the run was definitely there for the hand across now he's had to check here Come back outside. Star of the realm, you can see outside sub zero. He's getting home very well. Gee, and got to I the post still think the star of the realm on a dry track might be the one to beat the Melbourne Cup. Super performance. Vienne across the winner. Second was Ralph Hammett, number three, and third, Equity number six. John Wheeler, the winning trainer, he must be a very pleased man going to Tuesday's Melbourne Cup, Peter. Well, I'd say he would be, Dan, and John Wheeler's down here now at Quinella, but what a performance by the winner. That was unbelievable. Yeah, sensational. I don't even think the owners realised they'd won until I turned around and said, you've got it. But, uh, no, it was a marvellous run. Once he got the speed, he just took off, yeah. Did it worry that he missed the start because he got up into the field fairly quickly? Yeah, it worried me a little bit at the 1,000 when uh, Captain Cook was miles out in front, but uh, I had shades of uh, very rogue too. But, uh, no, I wasn't really in any worry, really. Well, when Rough Habit hit the front and he was finding trouble, surely you must have thought, well, I he'll do a good job to run for the field. I thought we were going to run first or second at that point, to be honest. But you across was just waiting for a split. He held up for a long time. Well, that's got to give you a tremendous amount of confidence into the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, I'm quite happy to have the horse. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting <laughs> reception, uh, uh, mixed with boos and uh, and jeers, but, well, I think they should be applauding a champion race horse, really. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And it's one of those things, they, they like to serve it up to Shane, and he's got to wear it. John, just one other thing, your uh, disappointment has been well documented about rough habit, and I suppose his good run today only... Uh, confirms that disappointment. Oh yeah, I think uh, I think enough has been said about it, but uh, yeah, it's unfortunate when things like that happen. Well, I'm sure you've got reasons to smile now, and a great Melbourne Cup trial, John Wheeler, congratulations. Thanks very much, yeah. Thanks. John Wheeler, training the Quinella here in the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes, and that performance will live long in the memory of everyone who's seen it here at Flemington this afternoon. The uh, Ander Cross, a simply amazing effort to beat Rough Habit and Equity in third placing. The numbers eight, three, and six. Shane Dye's just about to go into the weighing in room now, and I think Graham Kelly is in there, so if we can, we might just hang on for that. The time, two, four point nine for the numbers eight, three, and six, and there's a great gaggle of pressmen, photographers, television cameras all around the area at the moment. And I'm sure the thoughts of Shane Dye will uh, certainly be very interesting as he weighs in now and gets off the scales. And uh, Graham Kelly's in there, so let's go to Graham. Well, congratulations. Yeah, it was a very good win. He never jumped. He missed the start three or four lengths. He just stood there for some reason. But it was an outstanding cup trial. You know, it's going to be awfully hard to beat, especially if a bit of rain keeps up. And you settled him and got into a nice position after missing the start. He came up... Uh... Got into a lovely pause. He had a little bit of trouble obtaining a run at about the 300. Um, I had to check and, and switch around Prince Alieri, but he really did get the line strong. You uh, wouldn't have heard it, but you got quite a razz, but he missed the start, and of course you haven't been the most popular jockey in that's Melbourne. That's good, that's what <laughs> racing's about, and it's good for the public, and it gets them to the races, and I'm glad I can create interest in racing. Written two derby 